Hi, thanks for watching this Finance with Excel video. In this video, we're going to be making a home mortgage and home payment calculator. Um, the home mortgage portion is uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to be making a, uh, a workbook that will calculate the interest and principal portions of your home mortgage. And then in, uh, in the next video um, for, for this workbook, we're going to figure out how to incorporate uh, property taxes and uh, PMI insurance if you have it or uh, homeowners insurance, things like that to get, to get a, a uh, an overall view of what your uh, mortgage or home payment is going to be is going to look like. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to do in this video is we're just going to focus on the um, the mortgage payment by itself. And so to do that, we're going to need to calculate. We need to know what the home value is. Um, we need to know what the down payment as a percent of the home value is. The down payment in dollars. The mortgage value, the interest rate on your loan, the period on loan, that's how many years you're going to take uh, to pay it back. In this we're only going to be able to do a, a fixed year because we can't forecast um, interest rates. We're not going to try and forecast interest rates to try and estimate what a variable rate mortgage would do. So we're just going to look at what a, a fixed rate mortgage um, is going to look like. Your monthly payment and then your extra payment. Because if you even if you make small extra payments every month, it can make a big difference over the life of your mortgage. So just for uh, just for the sake of uh, this thing, I'm gonna pretend that I'm buying a $200,000 home and that my down payment is uh, gonna be 20%. That's what most, uh, most in, um, loans, to get a traditional loan, uh, you'll need to put down 20% down. And 20% down in dollar terms is going to be $40,000. So I've got a formula here that just calculates 20% times the home value. So my mortgage value is just going to be the home value minus uh, whatever I put my down payment. So this is the amount, this right here is $160,000 is what I'm actually borrowing from the bank. Now the interest rate, uh, this is March of 2017 and so interest rates on a 30 year fixed are about 4% if you've got a good credit rating. Uh, on a 15% uh, or a 15 year mortgage they're about 3.5%. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that. Now the period on the loan, I'm just going to say a 30 year loan for right now. And uh, and put this in years, and then the monthly payment to calculate the monthly payment, we're going to need to use the payment function. So I'm going to do P equals PMT. Now the payment function um, to and this is just a function that Excel has that will calculate the payment on a on a mortgage. So the interest rate is going to be four percent divided by. 12. Now the reason why it's divided by 12 is because your bank doesn't charge you, if they quote you an APR of 4%, they're not charging you 4% at the end of every year. They're charging you one twelfth of 4% every single month. And since you're making monthly payments, we need to convert your annual interest rate into a monthly interest rate. So it's just 4% divided by 12. Now the number of periods that you're going to be making payments is 30 years times 12. So next you need is this PV, this PV is the present value. So what is the present value It's of the loan? It's $160,000. And that's all you need. You don't have to fill out the other two things. So if we look at this, it says $764, but it's giving this to us as a negative number. We don't want this to be a negative number. Uh, we want it to be a positive number, so I'm going to put a negative sign in front of it. The reason why it gives it to you as a negative number is because Excel looks at this $160,000, and that's a loan that you receive. So that's money that's coming to you, so this number is positive. So what Excel, Excel assumes is that to pay this money off, you're going to have to spend $674 or $7,000 sorry, $764 a month needs to go away from you uh, in order to pay this loan off. And so um, they put it to you as a negative. I don't like it being negative. I just like to look at a positive. So I'm just going to put a negative sign in front of that function. And then the extra payment is just whatever you want it to be. So you could be 50 bucks. The last thing that I like to do is just a little spot of formatting is all of the inputs um, I'm going to highlight as gray. Um, and the reason why I do that is because I don't want to accidentally overwrite a formula. Um, so I want to say, well, what is my down payment? My down payment is 20%. It's not, you know, forty thousand dollars. And uh, or it's for, anyway. And so I, I'm, I'm calculating it as 20%. So if I change this to like a five percent down payment, it'll automatically update. And I don't want to mess um, mess it up. So with this, now I need to figure out. Uh, 
what do I need to know to actually create my amortization schedule? So I know that in each period, what is my mortgage amount? What is my interest principal, my total payment, and what's remaining of my mortgage after my payment? So, so we're gonna, we need the period, we need the mortgage amount, we need the interest, and then we need the principal, we need the total payment, we, and then we need the remaining mortgage. All right, so now I'm gonna highlight all of these and then I'm going to make that so that all the columns uh, fit. I'm also gonna bold these just because it looks good. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, uh, I'm gonna put my, my cell, or I'm gonna highlight the cell immediately underneath this period. Then I'm gonna go to view, freeze panes, and freeze panes. Now you see this tiny little line appeared. So now what happens is as we scroll down, it doesn't matter how far we scroll down, it locks these cells right here so we can always see what's in these headings. So in period one, what is my mortgage amount gonna be? Well, my mortgage amount is simply gonna be the value that I'm borrowing. So what's the interest rate gonna be? Or the interest, how much interest am I gonna owe on that? Well, I'm going to owe um, $160,000 multiplied by the interest rate divided by 12. So I'm gonna owe $533 in interest. Now, how much, so that's how much that in this month I'm paying in interest. How much am I gonna be paying in principal? Well, it's just gonna be my total monthly payment, which I'm gonna anchor on so I can drag these formulas down. And my total month, monthly payment is, uh, is just the required payment plus any extra payment. Now to get how much of that total payment is going to principal, I just take that number and subtract it from the interest payment. And there we, and then I can calculate that in my first month, my uh, total payment is going to be um, 281, or my $281 dollars of my payment is gonna go to uh, principal and 533 is going to interest. So my total payment is just going to equal the sum of these two. And then my remaining mortgage is going to equal my starting mortgage minus whatever I ended up paying in, um, in uh, principal. So now for period two, we can figure this out and we're almost ready to go. So what is my, uh, what is my mortgage amount at the beginning of period two? Well, it's the remaining mortgage at the end of period one. So what is my interest payment gonna be? Well, we can just drag this formula down. Um, and oh, as we see here, I forgot to anchor on the interest rate, so it, that's why it didn't um, work when I rolled it down. Okay, so now what we see is that as we drag this formula down, um, it's just going to be the mortgage amount multiplied by the interest rate divided by 12. So then the principal is just going to be, we can just drag this formula down again, and so we can see that uh, it's, uh, effectively the same thing, so it's our total payment minus whatever we're making in interest. This total payment is going to be um, just the sum of these two, and the remaining mortgage is just going to be, we can drag this formula down as well, and it will give me my, my formula. So I'm gonna put zero in here for a second just so that I can kind of show you something. Now, what we need, let's count this period. So this, this, I'm just gonna drag this this down. So if, I, if, if, I, if you put one, two, and then you drag it down, what it'll do is it'll just count as far as you drag it down. So let's drag this down to, um, to 374, that's just fine. So now if we take all of these formulas right here and we drag them down, and then we go down to uh, period 360. What we should find is that at the end of period 360, which is 30 times 12, our remaining mortgage is exactly zero. And that's what we see. So our, more, our amortization schedule works. But what we need to do now is we need to make this dynamic so that way these, everything below, once our mortgage is paid, no longer shows up. Now the way that we do that is I'm just is I'm going to first start by making a count function that will stop counting once your mortgage has been paid. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to do it you do it use an if statement. I'm going to say if and then so we got to say so how do we know if our mortgage has been paid uh, paid off in the previous amount? Well, the way we do that is if our monthly payment plus our extra payment is so that's if our is greater than or equal to 
the mortgage amount in the prior period plus the interest in the prior period. If that's the case, that's just basically saying if what we're planning on paying is in, in, uh, in the previous month is greater than or equal to what we total owe on our mortgage in that month, then we don't need any, then we're done, obviously. Then the last month, then that previous month is going to be our last um, payment, and so we don't need to count anymore. If not, so that, but if that's not the case, then we still owe something on our mortgage, and uh, I want it to be just whatever the previous number is plus one. So this if statement now then will, so I'm just gonna just for, for illustration purposes, let's pretend this is a one year mortgage. So we can see at the end of period 12, we owe zero. So now if I drag, if I drag this down, we can see at the end of period 12, it stops counting. Um, and so we are good right there. Now um, there could be, uh, Anyway, yeah, so we'll just go with that. All right, so now the next thing that we that we need to do is we once this is done, we don't want any of these numbers to show up either. Well, there's a very simple way to do that because we've already because this counter has already figured out um, this uh, the, this this count our count function our period function has already figured out when we're going to end up paying off our mortgage. So all we need to do is we need to reference that. So we just need to say if this period function is equal to a blank, then give us a blank. If not, then give us the formula that we'd already put in. And we just need, we're just gonna need to do that for uh, every single one of these, or for every single one of the rows. If this period function is equal to a blank, then give me a blank. If not, then give me the formula that we had already calculated. If the period function is equal to a blank, then give me a blank. If not, give me what we previously calculated. And then we're almost done. And then lastly, Okay, so now we can just drag all of these formulas down and we can see, so now what we see though is that it works, so I mean it's not giving us formulas anymore, but now we have all of these errors right here. So the way, and the reason why is because right here, this formula is asking me to reference cells above here, but there's nothing in those cells, so it's saying error. Well, there's a very simple solution to that. All we have to do right here is take this function and do an if error statement. So that just, an if error statement just says, well, if whatever you're asking me to return gives you an error, then return something else. So basically it says, if, so if error, if this right here, if this function right here returns an error, then give me a blank. And so I'm just going to do that and then hit that all the way down. And then we see it cleans everything up for us. Now this will work right here as long as we don't make any extra payments. But suppose we make some extra payments. What we'll need to do is we need this principle to end up being, um, we need this principle to be able to adapt to that. Because like suppose I make $3,000 a month extra in, uh, in payments. So let's see, uh, what happens is it's this uh, our payment right here is not able to adapt to that and so we end up overpaying our mortgage by three thousand dollars so how do we how do we uh, how do we correct for that well what we're gonna do is we're just going to adjust this uh, this formula slightly and what we're actually going to do, so what we're gonna do there is we are going to uh, use an if statement inside of here so we're gonna say if and then what we need to do, figure out, is we need to figure out what we owe. So if what we owe, is, which is our mortgage total, that if total what we owe is our uh, mortgage amount plus our interest, if total what we owe is less than what we're planning on paying, which is the uh, this monthly payment plus our extra payment, then our principal payment is going to, and then, then that means if that the only way that happens is if we're actually paying off our mortgage in that period, then our principal payment is going to actually is just going to end up being 
what our mortgage is. If not, then we're still paying off our mortgage and we're going to be in this, uh, then we then just give us what we had previously. Okay, so that, now if we send that formula down all the way, we see that it works. It, it, it all of a sudden, uh, it fixes everything that we're planning on doing. So now if we come down here, so now if we change it, see look, we were making, because we were paying the 13.6 is required plus our 3,000 extra in this uh, extra month. So we can see that we paid the exact same month in every single the exact same amount in every single month except for the last month where we didn't need to pay this whole $16,000. So we ended up paying uh, $13,282 which finished off our um, mortgage. Now if we put this down back to uh, 30 years and uh, then um, we're not making a $3,000 uh, a month extra. We're, let's just say we make a, a $50 a month extra payment. So last thing I want to do here is I want to calculate, uh, put a couple of sums here. I want, to, I want to calculate the total interest paid and uh, total expected interest paid and then savings, interest savings from um, so the interest savings from extra payments. I'm actually going to move these over here so I can do this real quick. All right. So the total interest paid is just going to be the sum of this interest payment column. So on this mortgage, we will have paid a hundred thousand dollars in interest payments over the 30 years. Now the total expected interest paid, that would be if you paid uh, zero extra payments, is just simply going to be the total number of payments, which is 30 times 12 times your minimum expected payment. So that's the total amount of pay, this right here gives you the total amount of payments that you're going to make over the entire life of your mortgage. Now we just need to subtract the value of your mortgage, which is $160,000. And, uh, and so that's the amount you're going to end up paying in, um, in mortgage payment or in interest payments. So your savings is just going to be your, um, what you were expected to pay minus what you actually paid. So you will have ended up, by paying an extra $50 a month, you will have ended up saving yourself $14,000 over the life of your mortgage. The other thing that we're going to calculate is um, uh, number, uh, or number of m period months to pay off and expected payoff time. So the number of months it's just going to be, what I'm going to do is just the max of this column. So we see it took us 321 months to pay off this mortgage uh, by, um, by when, we, uh, when we paid 50 bucks a month extra. And the total expected payoff, well the expected payoff was 30 years times 12. And so, let's put a thing uh, there, and then we can calculate that now you will have paid off your mortgage 39 months earlier. Well, 39 months in years is divided by, is, um, so you will have, you will have paid your mortgage off three and three and a quarter years earlier than you would have had you made no payments and you'd have saved yourself fourteen thousand dollars so now this uh this workbook is very dynamic and you can do um and you can change anything that you want if we up it to 150 dollars a month we can see that we save uh eight years on our mortgage and um we we'll end up saving $35,000 in interest payments. So this concludes uh, part one of our amortization schedule and home payment uh, calculator. Thanks for watching.